One of the things that's been terrifying us all about this pandemic is that we can't see an end to it. How on earth are we going to be able to tolerate staying at home in close quarters with our loved ones, often short of money, with the fear that it could go on for months or even longer if they fail to develop a safe vaccine? The economic, social and psychological effects of this simply defy the imagination. But there's a growing number of experts here and overseas who claim there is a way this nightmare could start to end as soon as six weeks from now. But they say it requires a gear shift in thinking and major changes in how we approach this crisis. It's the equivalent of breaking the glass on the emergency handle. What I've learned is that outbreaks have a beginning, a middle and an end, and the end always comes due to the community. Professor Kamalini Lokoge has extensive experience in epidemic control, including Ebola in Africa. She knows that if the community doesn't drive this and own it, it won't happen. I've seen communities that have nothing, that have barely come out of decades of civil war, end the deadliest outbreaks, and they've done that by working together, by looking after each other, and by doing what needs to be done. And I think we as a community, we know what, what we need to do. We need to stay home. If we do that, if we do it together, we'll end this outbreak. So what's being proposed? Now, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. This line here is the one you need to focus on. That's where a person with the infection passes it on to somebody else. A pandemic only comes under control when we get below that line. In other words, an infected person rarely passes it on. And this is where we are in Australia. So we've a way to go. To get below the line, we really need to make sure that each infected person keeps away from others or is kept away. It also means that people they might have infected are also quarantined strictly so they don't pass it on. No government rules can really make us do that. We've got to commit to it ourselves. We need to stop giving the virus opportunities to spread. So this virus, it's not, not a bushfire. It needs not magic. It needs contact to spread. So if we stop contact, the virus will stop spreading and it needs to start right now. But the second and really important thing that has to happen is that we have to know who is infected in the community. Because if we miss too many, there will be too many people above the line passing it on to others. And that means moving forward with how we identify as many infected people as possible. You need to identify every single infectious case and that includes people who don't have symptoms because if you don't identify those people, they will continue to spread the infection in the community. Secondly, you need to then track every contact that those people have had, close contacts in general. Most people will have nine or to 10 close contacts a day spread between their home and work contacts. You need to then put those people in quarantine and monitor them for symptom development. This is all about you and me taking control of the virus rather than letting the virus control us. You can see that the economy is shutting down, thousands of people are out of work, the, the queues are, going, are growing outside Centrelink, and so it's really important that we have a short, sharp approach to trying to control this so that uh, the economy can get back and the health system can get back. So if you want to control this fast and give us a chance that we can start to get back to normal life in a few weeks rather than months, these important steps have to be taken. Identifying as high a proportion of those infected as possible, strict isolation of people infected, and intensive identification and strict quarantining of contacts. Plus, at least 80% of us staying at home so we don't fire this up even more. Stephen Duckett from the Grattan Institute has examined this scenario. I think the Australian public would accept a short, sharp shock as long as they understand it is short. Coronavirus is growing exponentially, uh, that the, there's an increasing number of people who have been tested positive, and so we can use that same exponential growth to be an exponential decay. And just to reassure you, other countries have already got below the line, like Japan and South Korea. Those two countries have strong systems for detection, early detection and management of cases. They also have very strong systems for the community to respond and to do what needs to be done. And what they have had is the experience of responding to SARS to then 
know what they need to do and to do it effectively and to do it early. Then the question is, how long before we can take our foot off the brake and start to get our lives back? What does that look like? Four weeks, six weeks, six months? How long? The shortest time frame that you could be looking at in terms of getting an epidemic under control depends on how many of those measures you use. If you go the full hog and throw everything at it, go hard, go fast, do the full social distancing, full lockdown, I think it's even possible to see an impact in two weeks. Really, you won't see the major impact till about four weeks to six weeks, but you will start seeing an impact even after two weeks. So if you have a full lockdown for six weeks and uh, you will see the cases go down, everything will be a much more manageable scale because you'll be having fewer new cases every day to deal with. Then you can start gradually restricting, uh, lifting some of those restrictions because you're having fewer cases to deal with. You can manage it with the resources you've got. This isn't about moaning about governments and politicians. It's about us and it's about now. And some experts believe we can make the pain short-lived by fighting this virus together. That story was produced by Amy Donaldson. We invited the Chief Medical Officer and his deputy on the show for an interview. They weren't available. In a statement, the Chief Medical Officer says that there's been no time for the effect of intensive measures put in place this week to be observed as yet. He adds, whilst the growth in case numbers is concerning, the situation in Australia is very different from many other countries at this stage and most jurisdictions are reporting a strong public health response and contact tracing within 24 hours. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.